So this is uh, just a little summary of Frederick, the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, chapter one. I went through and I underlined some things that I thought uh, stuck out to me in this chapter. So I'm going to go back and read the things that I underlined. It starts out by saying, I was born in Tuckahoe near Hillsboro and about 12 miles from Easton in Talbot County, Maryland. I have no accurate knowledge of my age, never having seen any authentic record containing it. By far the larger part of the slaves know as little of their age as horses know of theirs, and it is the wish of most masters within my knowledge to keep their slaves thus ignorant. So Frederick starts off by talking about, you know, how he never knew, he didn't know what his age was when he was growing up, and most slaves didn't know their age, and you weren't really allowed to inquire about it. He says, I was not allowed to make any inquiries of my master concerning it. He talks about his mother. His, my, he says, my, mother's, my mother was named Harriet Bailey. She was the daughter of Isaac and Betsy Bailey, both colored and quite dark. My mother was of a darker complexion than either my grandmother or my grandfather. So his mother's name was Harriet Bailey. He says, his, my father was a white man. He goes on to go to further down. My mother and I were separated when I was but an infant before I knew her as my mother, before he even knew her as his mother. It is a common custom in, the part, in this part of Maryland from which I ran away to to part children from their mothers at a very young young age, so Frederick um, was taken away from his mother as an infant, didn't really get to know her. He said this was a common practice amongst the slaves in that area. Go f further down. I never saw my mother to know her as much more than four or five times in his life. So he only talks about he only saw his mother four or five times. She always made her journeys to see me at night. So she would come from another plantation to see Frederick at night. Um, and then she would go back to her plantation, you know, before before dark. Um, when he says when his mother died, um, he did get news that his mother had passed away. He says, I was not allowed to be present during her illness at her death or her burial. Um, later on. Uh, he talks about um, he talks about how you know on these plantations, um, some of the slave owners had sexual relationships with with uh, some of the slaves, slave women, and he said that in this chapter he says um, the master is frequently compelled to sell this class of his slaves out of deference to the feelings of his white wife. Um, he talks about how. Um, you know, uh, the the white women on the plantations used to despise the, I guess they call them mulatto or uh, biracial children because she knew that she knew that her husband was fathering those children with the slave owners. And oftentimes they would try to um, she would want when this like the the, the black slaves, um, the mulatto slaves would do something wrong that she knew were knew was like his children she would want his own children by her to be the ones to punish them. And so this put the slave owner in a, in a bind because he knew that they were brothers and sisters. Um, he says that my first master's name was Anthony. I do not remember his first name. He is generally called Captain Anthony. Um, his farms and slaves were under the care of an overseer. Of course, you know, the overseer was like the manager on the on the uh, plantation. The overseer's name was Plummer. Mr. Plummer was a miserable drunkard, a profane swearer, and a savage monster. He always went armed with a cowskin and a heavy cudgel. I have known him to cut and slash the women's heads so terribly that even Master would be enraged at his cruelty and would threaten to even whip him if he did not mind himself. He says that Mr. Plummer, he would at times seem to take great pleasure in whipping slaves. Um, he talked about one time when uh, Mr. Plummer was whipping a female slave or a lady slave. He says the louder she screamed, the harder he whipped. And where the blood ran fastest, there he continued to whip even longer. 
He says he would he would whip her to make her scream, whip her to make her hush, and not until overcome by fatigue, which he ceased to swing the blood clotted cow skin. I remember the first time I ever witnessed this horrible exhibition. I was quite a child, but I well remember it. I never shall forget it once I remember anything. He talks about, he goes on to finish up the chapter about, he talks about his Aunt Hester. He said his Aunt Hester was one of the most beautiful women he ever saw. And um, one of the slave owner's uh, sons, or let's see here, it says, Aunt Hester went out one night where, where or for what I do not know and happened to be absent when my master desired her presence. So the master used to, was in love with his Aunt Hester. Um, he had ordered her not to go out evenings and warned her that she must never let him catch her in company with a young man who was paying attention to her belonging to Colonel Lloyd. The young, man, the young man's name was Ned Roberts, generally called Lloyd's Ned. Why Master was so careful of her may be safely left to conjecture. She was a woman of noble form and of graceful proportions, being, having very few equals and fewer superiors and personal appearance among the colored or white woman. So he talks about how his Aunt Hester, he actually caught her with a, you know, she was a slave, a black woman. He loved her whenever he wanted, you know, sex with her, he would have her, um, you know, and uh, he warned her about ever catching her in the presence of a black man. And, uh, you know, because he was in love with her and she, he did catch her once and when he desired her, he found when he desired that, you know, to be with her, she was not there. He found her with another man and he whipped her severely. So that was what happened. That was what Frederick talked about in chapter one of his, um, the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, chapter one. That was just a quick summary of some key points that I underlined. Hope you enjoyed.